Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel. I'm located on the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, and our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, which is a, the brainchild of the Digital Pathology Association in conjunction with PATH Presenter. Our cases come from the uh, Stevenson Cancer Center, and our case today is that of um, a 65-year-old man who has noted over the past several months uh, some bilateral thigh pain. Uh, then one evening, not far long before presentation, well, uh, the evening of presentation, he stood to uh, move a uh, not very heavy box and uh, sustained sudden sharp pain in uh, uh, one leg and uh, came to the emergency room where uh, this radiograph was uh, found. Now, as we can see, of course, he has uh, had a, uh, a prior joint arthroplasty and joint replacement, but strikingly, he has a, a fracture here in the mid shaft of the femur. Uh, as we look at this, we see that the bone is a little bit uh, moth-eaten and uh, irregular, uh, but that was not uh, appreciated too much at the time of uh, his evaluation, and he uh, uh, was determined to have a fracture that needed uh, um, uh, some additional repair. Now, because he had um, pain in his other leg and had had an arthroplasty there, of course, as well, uh, they did uh, x-ray the other leg for comparison. Um, and we can see here on this radiograph that the cortex is slightly expanded um, and a little bit more vague. And there's a bit of a, a haziness to the marrow space and the tissue around the uh, uh, bone here. Um, but he was uh, told to, he was otherwise healthy and told to, to that it, this would uh, abate with uh, treatment. However, um, let's just go forward. Uh, three months later, when he came back for check and follow-up on his, uh, actually two months later, when he came back to check and follow-up on his uh, repair of his fracture, we can see that things had gone from, uh, if not bad to worse, at least from bad to bad. Um, and here we can see that the uh, bony fragments have uh, not uh, knit well together, uh, that there's continued destruction of the uh, uh, soft tissue and the bone around here with expansion of something uh, out into the soft tissue. And we can see that uh, here as well. So this uh, immediately uh, raised concern that, uh, in fact, uh, he had a um, uh, malignancy involving this area. Um, and uh, subsequently, a bone scan was uh, performed, uh, actually a, a PET scan, uh, which showed a very dramatic uh, uptake in uh, bilateral uh, femur areas with maybe a little bit of some other stuff, but nothing very specific that looked like a primary site. So uh, here we can see on the MRI, this the soft tissue component of that, the expansion of the cortex as it's sort of eaten away in the variable uh, appearance of the marrow. So as we think about things that destroy bro bone that occur in the mid shaft in adults, uh, first off, we would think about sarcomas, primary sarcomas of bone. Ewing sarcoma and so forth. Metastatic carcinoma is a, certainly a strong consideration, of course, uh, because that can give you isolated lesions. Although a setting like this where it's a symmetric and bilateral is a bit unusual. That would likewise be unusual for sarcoma. Lymphoma, on the other hand, uh, might have a bilateral presentation in some circumstances. Multifocal disease is seen with lymphoma. And of course, infection uh, can be a cause uh, for that. And I, any of these could give you some B symptoms, fever and so forth, lymphoma and infection being the most common ones in that situation. <clears throat> so after consulting with orthopedic oncology, a plan was developed to obtain a diagnostic tissue and provide uh, some palliative uh, treatment for him. Uh, this is a representative uh, section uh, that we received uh, both at frozen section and permanent tissues. And we can see at low power that this lesion is a very blue lesion, a few areas of uh, pink, uh, uh, more fibrous tissue. Um, and uh, so we're expecting there to be a lot of cytoplasm here, a lot of, excuse me, a lot of nuclear material here, uh, either a small cell lesion or a lymphoma. We don't see anything in terms of architecture here to suggest a metastatic carcinoma. 
although uh, melanoma certainly could be a consideration. Uh, as we go to higher magnification, we see that there is some uh, maybe slightly uh, amphiphilic appearance to the cytoplasm. Uh, not really a, a plasmacytoid appearance to the cells, but uh, sometimes this uh, more purplish cytoplasm is seen uh, in plasma cell lesions. Um, and uh, the nuclei are fairly large. There's a, a good uh, array of mitotic figures. You go to look at another area, get a little bit uh, additional feel for the morphology here. Um, and there's a background vasculature. Um, no evidence of residual bone tissue here. Uh, that's all been pretty well uh, eaten away and destroyed. So immunohistochemical staining was undertaken, um, and as uh, would be expected, this was uh, uh, negative for epithelial markers um, and found to be uh, strongly positive <clears throat> with uh, CD20 uh, having a high proliferation index. Um, and then with that, uh, establishing uh, the B lineage of the lesion, uh, further characterizing it uh, uh, in terms of its uh, stage of origin was accomplished using uh, FISH to evaluate for uh, MYC, BCL2, and BCL6 uh, rearrangements. So just to review, lymphoma of bone is uh, not a very common presentation of lymphoma in adults. Uh, it does uh, account for more than a few uh, primary bone tumors um, and a fair percentage of extranodal uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, pain, swelling, uh, multifocal involvement, and B symptoms are certainly are, are the, the ways that these patients pre present, although pathologic fracture, as in our case here, uh, is also a part of that uh, 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 presentation. Uh, diffuse large B cell lymphoma is the most frequently encountered type, but other varieties, such as marginal zone, Burkitt's, and so forth, uh, can also be encountered less frequently. Uh, most of these diffuse large B cell lymphomas are MYC rearranged, and some also, as in our case, uh, have BCL2 uh, rearrangement. Uh, amazingly, despite the uh, dramatic uh, destruction of bone, uh, five year survival is very high uh, in these patients. Uh, and many times, uh, the uh, bone that has seemingly disappeared um, as the patient responds will re knit together and uh, reappear. Uh, in uh, various situations. Now, it's important to recognize that multifocal disease or extraosseous extension, as we see in our patient, uh, does portend a potentially somewhat worse uh, prognosis. So, as the patient came back for follow up at two months after a few rounds of uh, chemotherapy, uh, we can see that the activity on the bone scan has diminished uh, uh, bilaterally, a little bit more on the uh, a fractured side than on the uh, non-fractured side, um, and this is a, certainly portends well for further evaluation of our patient and uh, his prognosis. So our final sign out today is uh, lymphoma of bone, diffuse large B cell type with uh, MYC and BCL2 rearrangements um, and um, pathologic fracture, of course. So thanks so much for joining us for this case. I hope that you uh, will uh, uh, comment with uh, encounters you've had with lymphomas of bone or other considerations uh, that you face uh, in patients who present with uh, pathologic or potentially pathologic fractures. Certainly an adult, not, not particularly osteoporotic, uh, there should have been consideration in this case uh, uh, or similar cases uh, for uh, pathologic processes. Um, and of course, if you like this, please subscribe so that you'll uh, catch our future releases and uh, share with uh, colleagues and friends. We always welcome your comments and feedback, uh, either directly or uh, in the uh, comments below. So until next time, thanks so much uh, for joining us.